Today's tutorial is going to be this beautiful, whimsical, mushroom macrame pixel wall hanging. Hi friends, let's go over the materials we're going to need. We're going to need a 12 inch wooden dowel, medium worsted weight yarn in the colors of our pattern. We're going to need single strand cotton rope. And we're also going to need yarn for the background color that kind of matches our single strand cotton. As you can tell, mine's a little off, but you know, try to match it as best as you can. And it should go without saying, you're going to need some sharp scissors. And optionally, you can use some T-pins and a macrame board. And as always, you're going to need to take a screenshot of the grid pattern. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to attach our single strand cotton rope onto our wooden dowel. So to do this, we're going to tie a lark's head knot. Fold your cord in half and then with the loop end, place that behind your wooden dowel. And then with your long tail ends, you want to thread that through the loop. I'm going to share with you my lark's head hack. I don't usually tie my lark's head knots like that by the textbook. What I do is I do this quicker, easier method. So fold your cord in half, just like before. Then what you want to do is you want to place your fingers inside and loop it onto itself. Then all you have to do is take your wooden dowel and slide it through. This method saves so much more time. Now let's tie the rest. Okay, so taking a look at our grid pattern here, each square on the grid represents a vertical double half hitch knot. And we're going to start at the top left and work our way to the right. Okay, so now let's start tying our knots. Working with a long strand of yarn, you want to place it behind your first strand of rope with the short tail end on the left and the long on the right. With your long tail end on the right, you want to make a loop on your right. Then with the long tail end, you want to wrap that behind and through the loop. Now this is only half of your knot. To complete the other half, you want to do the same thing. So make a loop on your right, wrap your long tail end around and through the loop. Cinch up your slack, but don't tighten it too tight because we want to be able to slide it all the way up to the top. Then once your knot is at the top, you can make your adjustments. Okay, so to tie the second knot, you want to make sure that your yarn is behind the next strand of cord. Make a loop on your right, wrap your tail end around and through the loop and cinch up to the top and then repeat one more time. Make a loop on your right, wrap your tail in around and through the loop and cinch up. So the vertical double half hitch knot is the main knot that we're going to use for this entire macrame wall hanging. You will definitely master this knot. Okay, so I ran out of yarn on purpose. So if that happens to you, all you have to do is cut off another piece and attach it just like we did at the very start. This is actually why I don't normally give out the lengths for our working cord because you're going to always run out and you're going to always have to attach a new piece. So it really doesn't matter. But I do like to work with 60 inches at a time, which is roughly my arm span. I find that that's the perfect length because it's long enough to get a lot of knots tied, but short enough not to shred my yarn. Okay, we worked all the way across. Now we need to go back in the opposite direction. Working with the same strand of yarn, you want to place that underneath your last cord and bring it all the way over to the left. Then you want to make a loop on your left, wrap your long tail end around and through that loop and repeat. So it's the same exact thing as we were doing before, but in reverse. Now I'm not going to lie, it is a little awkward working in the opposite direction. But trust me, you'll get used to it, especially if you do a whole bunch of these macrame wall hangings. It is true what they say, practice makes perfect. If you are new to creating macrame pixel wall hangings, I do suggest starting off with a smaller pattern to begin with. The smaller the grid and the less colors, the easier your pattern is going to be. Okay, so taking a look at our pattern, you can see that we do switch out a color on this row. So what I like to do is I like to count out where that color is going to be and then I lift up my cord that the, the color change is going to be. That way I can just continue on tying my knots and I don't have to worry about it. 
Nothing is worse than if you fly through your row and then you realize you forgot to switch out a color and then you have to untie a whole bunch of knots. Trust me on that, it is not fun. Anyways, once you get to that point, you can bring back down that rope and then place your previous yarn down as well and then go ahead and grab your new color. Once you snip off your new color, we're gonna attach it just like we did at the very start of this project, only we're working in reverse this time. So your short tail end is gonna be on the right and your long tail end is on the left. Now, forgive me here, this was really hard to demonstrate because I'm right-handed and it's always really finicky for me to attach a new piece when I'm going backwards. I've been macrame for several years now and I've done so many macrame pixels and this is still a little bit tricky for me, so don't worry if it's tricky for you too. Practice does make perfect. Just take your time and knots can always be untied. All right, so now we need to switch back to our original color. So take that previous yarn and you wanna run it underneath your cord here. Make sure that it's over top of your green cords and underneath your rope. Then all you have to do is just carry on tying your vertical double half inch knots just the same as you were before. So anytime you need to switch back and forth, all you have to do is just run it behind your work and carry on. All right, so we already went across and back. We're gonna go back to the right, zigzagging all the way down our pattern. Anytime we have a new color, we're gonna attach a new piece. And then if we have to switch back, we're gonna run it behind our work. And don't worry about all those loose ends. Just make sure they're at the back of your work and we'll deal with them at the end of our pattern. Once you've tied your very last knot, admire your work and flip it over. At this point, you can leave the mess at the back. If you wanna leave it, that's fine. Or if you just wanna trim it really short, that's also fine. But what I like to do is I like to take any two pieces that are close together and join them together with a double knot. I feel a lot more confident in my work when I do that extra step especially if you plan on selling your work. That way you have that peace of mind that your knots aren't gonna come undone when they go to clean their macrame. Now there are several different types of ways to clean a macrame wall hanging, but I do find that some clients like to knock the dust out of it and that can make your knots come undone. So I do feel better doing this just one extra step. Plus it does look nicer. You can also add a backing to it as well, which is extra professional. Now, if you'd like to learn how to add a backing as well as your signature onto your macrame pixel wall hanging, I do have a tutorial for that. I'll leave it on the screen now and I'll see you in the next one.